and welcome back to My Art Pixie. I'm Maria and today we are going to jump right into prompts four through six from my watercolor journal prompts. If you are new and you would like to join me, go to myartpixie.com. I'll put the link below and you can grab your watercolor journal prompt list today. You can go check out some of my past videos where I have done a watercolor journal setup and I have also done prompts one through three, and I will also provide the links below. So let's get started. So let's talk about everything that I have for um, today's video. So this is the Windsor and Newton watercolor um, kit. You can get just about anywhere. I will put a link below. It was a gift, um, but I know that they have these um, at Michael's, so I'll put that link below. This watercolor journal that I am using, I got at Jerry's Art Arama, and it is the Handbook, Handbook Journal Company. And that's the only place that I have been able to find that carries this brand, um, so I'll put that link below as well. I have a clip to hold back my paper, a jar of water, my paper towel, and then I also have a 13 millimeter, uh, which is a half inch Cotman Windsor and Newton um, br uh, watercolor brush. Um, you can get these in Michaels, but I've gotten them off of um, Jerry's Artorama and also Blick.com um, as well. I'll link it below if you want to go check that out. That's a flat brush. And then I also have a round eight um, from Royal and Lang Nickel. Um, so for this, for my watercolor journal, I typically use my Traveler's watercolor water brush um, because a lot of times I will take my watercolor journal out um, and then it's just handy to already have my water in here and then I can take it on the go. If I'm going to be around my desk, I do tend to pull um, a couple of brushes um, that I have in my studio. So uh, let's just go ahead and get started into those prompts. If for some reason you missed the prompts one through three, you can go back and watch that video. I have the link below. All right, so we're gonna start with prompt number four, which covers gradients. So a variegated wash um, is when you have two different colors that you are working with. You start by mixing two colors separately um, with clean water. You want to make sure that you have enough paint to cover the entire uh, wash and you're going to start at the top of the paper with one color and then you're going to add the second as you continue through um, the wash and I'll demonstrate here in just a minute but you are going to see that the two colors blend together and then you're going to finish with that second color all the way until you reach the bottom of the paper. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I am going to use my um, half inch flat Cotman brush. And whenever you do a wash, like we had talked about in the previous video, you always wanna make sure that you have plenty of water and plenty of pigment so that you can start your wash at the top and, um, and finish it all the way to the bottom. Oh, and I'm sorry, we're not gonna be on this page. I'm gonna do that over here. So, let me just move this over slightly so that you guys can see. So this is the Alizarin Crimson Hue that I'm starting at the top. Okay, and then I want to go into my Ultramarine Blue. So you wanna make sure that you have enough blue and enough red to cover your paper. So depending on the paper size. So that should be good to cover um, our watercolor journal. So I'm gonna start actually with, let me rinse this out. I'm gonna start with the red at the top and I'm gonna start the gradation and about halfway down, I'm gonna start the blue. So remember when we do a wash, you do wanna tilt your book just a little bit. And you're just wanting that bead of water to fall. 
So every time you run your brush across, you're going to grab that bead of water that's at the bottom. And then it will gradually kind of work its way down, especially if you have your book tilted like I do. Okay, and about halfway down, I'm going to grab the blue. Okay, so now I'm going to do it again. This time I am adding more color to make it a brighter gradient. It's gonna be the same thing, the variegated gradient, but I'm putting more color into that pan. Same thing with the red here. putting more pigment than I am water. So I'm gonna start with my red, and remember, you're always going to want a nice bead um, moving its way down. So basically, you're transitioning from the red to the blue. So I'm gonna put that up here, and as you can see already, it is going to be brighter. Okay, so now I have a nice bead at the bottom and I'm going to go into my blue. Same thing, I'm going to go over that bead. And I'm gonna work my way down. Now, as you can see here, it went from the, um, the red into the blue, and it really made this really pretty um, purple that you can see here. And I feel like I've lost my ultramarine blue. If that happens to you, and you do need to work quickly, then you add more ultramarine blue, and then you keep going and you'll get that ultramarine blue working its way down. Until you get to the bottom. So the variegated wash just simply means that the there's a transition happening. So it's transi transitioning from the red, making the purple, and then to the blue. <clears throat> so I wanted to show you, if you add more pigment, you are going to get a brighter um, gradation. If you add more water, you're going to get a very light gradation. And then as always, we always want to label our work. Okay, so now I'm going to do the graded wash. Um, this is a gradient that uses one color. I've got some clean water in my jar and a clean paper towel, um, and I'm going to do uh, just one color from top to bottom. The difference between the graded wash is that you're going to start with a lot of co color and you're going to be adding clean water and that's why we needed clean water for this um, demonstration. So you're going to start at the top. Remember that you're going to tilt just as you always have and actually I'm gonna move my paint down here so I can get it a little easier. But I'm gonna tilt my um, book up here, start at the top just like everything, it's going to bead. When you're doing a wash, it's gonna bead at the bottom. And I'm going to continue to add that purple color that we just made. And it's going to continue to bead. And then when we get about halfway, I'm going to stop with the pigment and I'm just gonna start adding water. You still want to go over that bead. Don't splash the water like I just did. Okay. 
and as you can see I got a little messy um, there but again that's what's so great about um, your watercolor journal is that you can play around this is not a masterpiece that I'm creating here and so I can just kind of pick pick that water up and all is well okay so here you can see it starts with the purple and it goes all the way down to just clean water so I'm going to speed up the process and I'm going to show you one more graded wash okay and so this one you can see I started with the turquoise and I worked my way down next we're going to go into prompt five these are going to be your basic strokes and that means your brush strokes which is a huge part of watercolor painting so we're going to cover lines hatching or cross hatching and um, petals and leaves so with lines you can create thick and thin straight curvy jagged looped lines um, and it really helps you to get to know your brush so you can make these markings with several different brushes if you want to the hatching and the cross hatching is angled lines next to each other that create texture and shadowing the cross hatching is similar to hatching except that you will actually be crossing lines and then petals and leaves so using a light pressure to create foliage shapes and this helps for flowers and botanical watercolor paintings so now I'm just gonna work on some brush strokes so this is just a way for you to get to know your brush so it may seem kind of silly but what you're gonna do is you're going to create some lines um, you're going to um, apply light pressure and you're going to get very thin lines If you apply heavy pressure, you're going to get thick lines. Now you can try other brushes because obviously other brushes are going to create different lines. I had said that you could do straight, curvy, zigzag, loops, all of those kinds of things. So I'm going to switch over to my blue. You can do wavy lines. You can try those also with thicker or thinner lines. So if you wanted to do something that was thicker, you could do that as well. You could do zigzags. And you could also do different brushes so that you could see what that would look like with a different brush so obviously this is going to give a thinner zigzag than the eight round brush okay so this is really just for you to explore and get to know your brush um, so you could do uh, loops if you wanted to something like that that you know is kind of silly um, just to kind of see you know what different strokes that your brush can make so really there are no rules as to line making um, because you're literally just making lines um, on your paper but it is a great way for you to really get to know your brush and what it can do for you in future paintings I'm going to switch over to the flat brush here and I'm going to show you also you can do a mark making um, like I said with the different brushes that give you different results and so you can experiment too with those different brushes and the thicknesses and thinness you know that you can get with that brush the cool thing with the flat brush too is that you can try marks um, that are more at an angle and the other benefit with a flat wash is that you can get very thin or a flat wash a flat brush is that you can get very thin lines too
So all of this, except for this one, but all of this from one brush. So that's why this kind of practice is good, especially if you get a brand new brush and you want to kind of get used to it and, and kind of see what it can do for you. So that is the uh, lines. Then we have our hatching. And hatching is very similar, except that you are going to go at an angle and the lines are very close to each other. Okay. And then we have cross hatching. And cross hatching is hatching. And then you're going to go the opposite direction. And that creates um, your cross hatch. Now, something to keep in mind is that those colors, they will bleed into one another. So sometimes you could do, you know, just a quick hatching and then you can go the other way. But keep in mind that those, uh, those are going to bleed together, right? Um, you can do two colors, but remember they're going to um, bleed together. So you could cross hatch and then grab another color and cross hatch, but keep in mind that they will bleed together. But that is the hatching and the cross hatching. Now, what this is great for is for shadows um, and creating texture on your paper too, which we're gonna talk about um, texture um, and prompt in the next prompt as well. Um, but that is the hatching and the cross hatching. The last one is the petals and the leaves. It's all based on pressure, okay? So you can start with light pressure and then go heavy pressure. Light pressure, heavy pressure. Light pressure, heavy pressure. Light and heavy. That is creating a leaf shape, okay? And then a stem. A leaf shape and a stem. A leaf shape and a stem. So that is that exercise. And um, you can do this, like I said, with different brushes as well. So let's try that again with the eight round. So light, heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy. Okay, so there you can see with that, um, you can get, you know, different, leaf shapes that way. You can also see that the, the water is kind of pooling as well. And what that means is it's collecting in different places. If you uh, don't want that to happen, then you would go slower and kind of run that uh, drop down. You could also tilt and then that would also fall just like a wash would if you want that to all run at the bottom. You can see that one running down, but then that gives you a more even um, brush strokes than this kind of thing. And um, it's kind of work its way down to the bottom there. So if you want that more even look, then you would just tilt your book, go heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy light and allow that water to kind of work its way down to the bottom there. And then you can always pick up that excess water as well. Okay, so that's one way to do that brush, that mark making. Um, but you can also um, start by putting your brush down and you swipe to the left or the right and then bring it together. Again, I'm gonna tilt my page because I want that water to naturally run down and it does create um, a gradation there as well. Um, if you don't want the gradation, then you would just pick up that excess water, um, but you're naturally going to get that with watercolor, but you're going to 
um, start at the here at this side. You're going to swipe to the left and come back to the right. And you can go over it too. Don't be afraid to go over that if you want to make that you know brighter or darker um, because all of that water is going to stay within that brush mark. But this is going to give you um, that natural leaf shape. Um, you can also take it the other way as well. And that's going to give you that leaf shape. So again, just to go over it again, you're going to press and go to the left and press and go to the right. And then when you come down here, you kind of collect it so that it looks like it's the bottom of the leaf there. Now you can do glazing over the top of this and give it a little more definite definition. If you don't know what glazing is, you can check that out in my last video. Um, I did go over what glazing is. Um, this is also true for petals. So if I grab some of this and I want to create some petals, I would also swoop over, swoop, and I'm just creating those petal marks and I'm using the point that is in the brush itself, swooping and swooping. And you remember, you can swoop from one side or the other. Um, and then I am just going to allow that paint to kind of fall. But that's how you would, you know, create a little flower. So I could do three, I could do one, you swoop one side and the other, swoop one side and then the other. I'm going to turn my book, swoop to the left, swoop to the right, and then you've got three petals. There's lots of different ways that you can create petals as well. If I want, wanted to, you know, make that swooping sound, or make that swoop, sorry, and then I make a single petal then I can swoop and make another and make another and you've got those individual uh, petals there that you can then you know bring together so the great thing about make, making these marks is that you get used to your brush and you get used to the mark mark making so that when you go to a larger piece you have practiced rem practice remember that your art journal is a safe place for you to practice so that you can kind of mess around um, and remember when you mess up it's a good thing because it teaches you what not to do the next time um, and so th then when you get to a bigger piece, you have practiced that enough times that you then feel more confident um, putting down those petals, okay? And you can experiment because obviously there's, um, you know, more than one kind of petal out there in the world. There's a lots and lots of different kinds of petals. So if you wanted something that had you know, more of um, a dip of like almost like a heart shaped petal, then you can create that just by moving your brush in such a way that it's going to create that shape. So again, it's just playing and having fun and having the freedom um, with that mark making. And remember, try different brushes and kind of see what they can do as far as, you know, making different uh, petals and things. So with the flat brush, I like to go up and around and back, and it creates a very nice long petal. Um, I'm going to do that again for you. You just go up, you go over and down. Okay, you can um, fill that in completely if you want to. So I'll show you again and I'll fill it in. So you can go up and around and down. And then I brush again to fill that in completely. Okay. 
And remember, you can go over stuff if you want to get rid of some of that, some of that excess water. Okay, let's do a, that again. I'm going to go up here. You go up. You can make a big petal if you want to. So really thin, really big. Here I'll make one that's super tall. So let me get plenty of paint and then I'm going to go up, over, and back down. And then I'm just going to get a really um, large petal there which can come in handy when you're doing different kinds like a daisy or something like that. So again, use the different brushes when creating these different marks because you can get a huge variation there. Okay, we're gonna go on to prompt six. So this is to sketch and you're, we're also gonna talk about our um, texture strokes. So this is more brush work um, that you're going to be doing. So the first one is rendering. We're gonna create strokes that are basically like drawing on your paper and then scrimpling. So that's just irregular motions that are used to make either a line or layers on, of the paint. Um, you can do this with a dry brush and you can get some really fun textures and you can even take the excess water out of it before applying onto your paper. And then stippling. Stippling is basically painting tiny dots onto your um, paper, creating a fun texture. Okay, so let's get into some of those. So the first one I said is rendering. So rendering can be anything. So let's say I'm going to render a bird. So I may just quickly and very fluidly sketch out a bird, the wings, and maybe the feet. This is rendering. I am just quickly kind of putting in something and creating um, a, a bird here. Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect, just real quick and simple. Let's do the same thing with a flower. So I'm just gonna quickly render in a flower. So you're very loose with your brush. You're not, um, you can put, you can put down pressure if you want to, but the idea is to keep it very loose when you are rendering something onto your paper. And it's very fast and very quick. So if um, I'm going to do, let's say I'm go going to do a page here and I want a seascape, okay? And so I've got my horizontal line that is gonna create, you know, here's my ocean out here, and I just quickly bring that in. You know, maybe here is my sun. Here are some clouds up in the sky. And then down here, um, I have my beach, but maybe I want to draw some boards. So there's like a, a boardwalk right, going out to the beach, and then here is my quick little rendering of that. So sometimes people render and just leave it be. Other people render so that they can then go in and fill everything in. So now that I have my rendering, I'm gonna take some of that ochre, and maybe I'm going to bring in my sand color for my beach. These are my boards. So then I bring in my boards here. And then I've got my sun in the back. And I'm just quick rendering in each piece. So it's not anything fancy. And then I'm gonna go through my water there. And then last but not least, 
work on my sky. So it's just a quick rendering. It's nothing perfect. You can obviously, you can let everything dry, but rendering is just quickly putting in a sketch. Scumbling. So scumbling, you, you want a dry brush when you do this. And actually I'm gonna switch over to my round, but I'm gonna grab some of this burnt sienna here. And then I'm going to dry it off on my paper towel. And then I'm gonna go in with the scrimpling. And it's just quick marks on your paper. And this will create texture and depending on what brush you use as well, okay? Now, the idea is not to have a lot of water and then you will create texture. You can do this to create flowers or to create green grass. And again, you're just playing and you're kind of seeing what you can do. Now you wanna be careful, you don't wanna ruin your flat brush, so make sure that you push that back out. But as you can see, I got different mark makings depending on what brush I use. Now let's use the water brush. but it's a little harder with the, with the water brush to get it dry, to get that dry look. So you have a little more like a wetter look with that. Okay, so that's um, scumpling and then we have stippling. Now stippling, you're going to do little dots on your paper. I'm gonna do this with, um, with the purple here. And just like it says, you're just making dots. You can go at an angle if you want to, and that makes the bigger dots. You can go straight up and down, and that makes smaller dots. Okay, let's stipple with some of this ultramarine blue with my round. Making dots there. If I go, if I do stippling and I go on kind of have it at an angle. Then it makes a different dots. So that is the stippling. And then of course, you wanna label your paper so that you can remember everything that you did. And now let's bring everything together. <laughs>
thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the prompts and that you are able to paint right along with me. Again, if you missed my um, journaling prompts one through three, you can go check them out as well. We are going to finish up with prompts seven through nine in an upcoming video. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you would like to get notified of when my next videos come out, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so that you can follow along with more watercolor journaling. Until next time, bye!